Hey, Jeff, or geez, Jeff, John, welcome <laughs> back. Man. I'm like jumping ahead of myself already. There is a Jeff, but not yet. Yeah. yeah. Uh, how's yeah. it going today? It's good, man. It's good. It's glad to have you back in the jump seat. Glad to all of our viewers for having us back. It's been two weeks. Man, it's kind of uh, it's kind of crazy. This two week schedule and get used to all that uh, uh, time in between here. For those of you who are joining us for the very first time, the jump seat is a, a bi weekly spotlight now, uh, where we bring you key industry thought leaders, subject matter experts, and insights into new technology and or products used in the fire service uh, here today. We're going to be talking about one of those new products or those uh, really revolutionary products and that uh, changes the game uh, in the fire service here as well. It's hosted by myself, David Dursing, and my co-host, Mr. John Martins. Thank you. Thank you. Two uh, uh, fellow firefighters, um, and uh, uh, we enjoy riding the jump seat as well as bringing the jump seat show to you each and every week. So welcome, and uh, we're glad to have you all here. So, John, you know, in the last two weeks, there are a whole bunch of things we could talk about when it comes to what's happening in the fire service. You know, um, I know I've got a couple little things, but you've got two bigger things that are more important in my books here. So I'm going to hand it yeah. over to you. Uh, yeah, for, for sure. What's hot? That. Yeah, well, I'm going to start with uh, just showing one more uh, recent, well, it's up, upcoming truck delivery here. I'm going to go ahead and share the uh, share the screen. This comes to, uh, this will be coming to the central Illinois area, um, Long Creek to be exact, just outside of Decatur area. This will be another uh, a, a Rosenbauer put together by Sentinel Emergency Solutions. And this truck is uh, definitely got the red on black going on. There's the grill. Here is a quick snapshot of the uh, side panel here. You can see the pump panel. And for anybody who doesn't know what this is yet, this is another SAM system that's uh, getting ready to hit the street. Um, they uh, qu built quite a rig here, and I just want to give a shout out to Brian Fran, Steve Williams, and the folks there at Sentinel, as they are truly uh, on the edge here, putting out uh, more and more of these trucks and introducing this to the, the region. So we appreciate uh, Sentinel, we appreciate Rosenbauer, and obviously we appreciate everybody else involved. There's a lot of, a lot of moving pieces in getting a truck like this ready for production and on, on the street here, here soon. So. Well, I I tell you what, those folks at Long Creek uh, should be pretty excited to get a SAM unit, uh, particularly one looking that good there uh, here in the very yep. near future. And I'll be there in about a week, a week and a half, actually. I'll get to see this thing in person. And, and yes, I, uh, I am excited. So more to come there. So we, awesome, appreciate, awesome. we appreciate that. And uh, yeah, so uh, otherwise, I got to fight a little fire last night. That was that was uh, yeah. nice. Tell us it, about been a that. While. You got to fight a little fire, John. Yeah, we, what, what happened there? I just... Uh, you know, got uh, got the call right after dinner. I had my kiddo. I actually had to had to get some quick daycare because the wife was at something else. But rounded up a, a quick quick turnaround. Got her to come by and grab him and headed for the station. We were we were second on scene, and uh, it was unfortunately fully involved at the time just to, due to the location and and stage it was in. But uh, got to do our best to to make make a difference and and get some wet wet stuff on the red stuff. It it'd been a while, so I got my got my fix, I guess. So. Well, All good. I, I was gonna say that is a that is a, a big thing. You know, uh, yep. the last couple times we've got to share, you know, our fire experiences or stories. Mm -hmm. uh, it's been me. It hasn't been you making any runs uh, other than when you you jumped off the show for a medical emergency a couple of weeks back. But uh, true. Um, we uh, thank you for doing your part, and thanks to your whole crew uh, out there uh, risking it in yep. battle. I know. Um, it's not been a great week uh, for others in the fire service. We've had a number of fatalities um, and uh, yeah. um, whether it be up in New York state, uh, unfortunately, I actually have to go to a, a funeral for a fallen firefighter uh, tomorrow, a neighboring department, um, mm -hmm. longtime veteran firefighter, uh, 40 years actually in a volunteer uh, department, yeah. uh, passed away with throat cancer. Um, mm -hmm. So uh, two months ago he was fine. And uh, tomorrow we're having yeah. a, a funeral. So uh, it's unfortunate. Yeah. With that being said, make sure you guys are all being safe out there, whether you're responding, whether you're actually fighting the fires. Um, and uh, that's one of our biggest things. Make sure everybody goes home uh, uh, every single week. So, yeah. Um, so, Dave, switching gears here. What do we got going yeah. on? You know what? Is there, a, is there a Jeff out there that you were talking about? We earlier, actually or? have a Jeff out there. Yeah. And so I can actually see him in my little screen. You guys can't see him yet. But, you know, 
I want to bring back for the third time to the jump seat. You know, he's our only and first at this point, uh, Mr. Jeff Van Meter. He's a product manager with Hale Products. Jeff, welcome to the jump seat. Uh, thanks for having me. So, Jeff, um, give us a little background on yourself, who you are, what you do, how long you've been there, and uh, what are we going to see today? So, uh, I've been working for Hale for 15 years. Uh, currently, I'm uh, the product manager for Pumps. So what I wanted to do today is actually show you how we build our QMAX Pumps, from machining all the way to painting and out the door. Oh, it's awesome. We're looking forward to it. Um, because of COVID protocols, we haven't really been able to do this yet. Uh, and you know, as you guys see, Jeff is masked up uh, as he is entering and, and going to be uh, abiding by all those COVID regulations uh, at our facility in Ocala, Florida. If you guys have questions throughout, uh, any of your viewers, just fire away comments in the chat field. We'll try to address them as, as they come up and become available. But Jeff, um, why don't you take us for a walk then? Where are we at? And uh, why don't you tell us uh, uh, the steps of the process? All right. So right now I am in the machine shop. And so in, in the machine shop, this is where we we take the body and we put all the options in it. So the first machine that I'm gonna show you is that one that we use for doing those options. So when you look at how a, a QMAX comes in, you have certain ports in it and you also, our supplier, they come through and they make sure they x-ray everything and make sure all the thicknesses are there. But because of all the options that we offer on the QMAX, we have to machine some of that. So right no, here real, is where we, Jeff, is can where you we, hear me real quick? Can you show can us one you. more time? Show us one more time the, uh, we'll call it the x-ray or the uh, the process of checking that cast thickness. So you can see so that So each right of those here. are measurements, correct? Yes. Did you catch it okay. that time? Yep. We did. We yep. did. Thank, Thank you. you. So here we have our large CNC machine and we'll put those options in depending on how the customer orders it. This machine over here is where we take all of our suction tubes and we put the threads on them. So you'll see all of our suction tubes right here. We machine those threads on them and those go on the end of the QMAX. He's actually gonna show us one right here. So you can see here where he's put, he's put all the threads on it. So we've machined those out. How many options do we have on those, Jeff? What's that? How many options of, uh, of inlets like that do we have? Uh, we have around seven options. Wonderful. And so, and so then what you see here is one of our larger uh, fed machines. And you can see a couple of different gearboxes on the feeder right now, this one can run by itself. It takes no input. And you'll notice there's different kind of gearboxes on here, but I'm going to center on this G gearbox because that's what's predominantly used on the QMAX and QMAX XS. So you see here what they're doing with this gearbox is they're putting all the all the holes in it for the the uh, shafts and getting it ready to go out the door. So drilling, tapping, facing, all the machining on that that gearbox casting that is needed to build a, and assemble the right product. Correct. And and now I'm going to head over to our pump build area. So generally what would happen is those would be put on a forklift after they're finished and they would go next door. So uh, I tell you what, Jeff, I'm going to take over here as you uh, as you jump outside. Uh, and give you guys just a quick overview of where Jeff is in the Hale facility for all of you following at home. So uh, this is an overhead view of, of the Hale operation in Ocala, Florida. If you guys can uh, see my mouse there on the screen, up here in this uh, top right corner, this is where Jeff was just at. That is the machine shop at Hale. And so you see Jeff in the bottom left corner, he's walking right now. So he actually walked us through the machine shop, is coming out and walking across this parking lot here. And he's gonna take us over and across the street and inside this larger long building, which is actually where all the pump assembly takes place. So uh, we started back here in the machine shop. We have a warehouse space 
right above that. Um, this is actually the main office area within Hale. Uh, we also have an uh, area where they do gauge assembly uh, and other componentry in there. We also have a training classroom. Anybody who ever comes down and does any of the hands-on uh, pump repair, pump maintenance courses, uh, they're actually all done here in the training center and in the, uh, the visitor center. And Dave, one thing maybe we point out with your cursor is where some of the uh, lighting is now from Akron Brass being um, put, put together. You want to point that out real quick? Yeah, so it's actually it's actually back here in this back uh, uh, portion of the building. So uh, they do do uh, some of the lighting assembly and lighting uh, production for the Akron Brass uh, products uh, here as well. So that extend the light brand of products. So as Jeff continues across the street there, Jeff, don't get hit. All right, make sure you look both ways. Um, <laughs> But he's going to come over here and enter into uh, the main assembly building now, uh, where we'll actually see him uh, uh, taking us here momentarily. Um, we're focusing on the QMAX today and how the QMAX is built. John, why don't you tell us a little bit about the QMAX and what makes it so special? Yeah, you bet. So uh, as you can see here in the in the photo, we'll make it simple. So where you see white, that's going to be water coming in. That's the intake side of the pump. Where you see blue. That's after that water is sped up, pressurized, and put out to what would be discharges, whether it's handline discharges for a deck gun, uh, monitor, you, you name it. That's all that water, and where you, where you see blue is where it's uh, entering the discharge side of the pump. And so this cutaway is a good example of just showing uh, a couple things that we'll hit on as we talk. But when you look at this, this is a unibody casted piece here. This is one giant, heavy structure essentially, that's that's got basically multiple cavities in it, but it's one piece. And so what that's doing, and as we talk, we'll explain it, but think about how many bins or lack thereof that our pump has. Uh, that's just good to know. You wouldn't know this if you didn't see this photo, but watch where that water comes up and how few turns, twists, bends it actually has to make to reach a port. Dave's circling a port right now, and in this truck, or this truck, excuse me, this QMAX actually has uh, 16 discharge port options. Uh, on this XS, we've got the majority of them are actually four inch, so you can get full flow out of those. Um, there you go, Dave, uh, right here, you're seeing the intake side again in white, as well as you'll see the red arrows pointing to a dual eye impeller. So water's coming from both directions to that eye uh, through that unibody casted pump. So, hey, John, you know, you talked about that water coming in. So it comes in through this white section again that you see here and it feeds the eye of the impeller. But one of the great things is, is we bring it in in two places. We take it out at two places, making the QMAX extremely efficient, extremely effective. So we have two cut waters. There's one here at the top, one here at the bottom. And these are exit points from that center area of the pump, allowing the water to come off the impeller and exit evenly across that, that unibody manifold. John Sorry. was talking a little bit about the, uh, the dual port or all the various port configurations as well. And uh, I had to jump back really quick. One of the cool things about the, uh, the dual cut waters is this really makes that pump extremely efficient and allows us to get a lot of water through the impeller in a, in a very limited amount of time. That's so right, less bends, even, more pressure. Less pound bends, pound. more pressure, highly efficient. And, and yep. to kind of extend that further, the QMAX is, is capable of an NFPA rating of 2,250 PSI. Even though most GPM. departments, excuse me, yes, 2,250 GPM. Thanks, John. Yep. Even though most departments are utilizing it at, uh, at 1,500 gallons per minute uh, on, a, on a common uh, apparatus on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, and... Um, you know, one of the, the good things with the dual cut waters is we can get the water out really efficiently. I mentioned that before. With 50 PSI of inlet pressure to this pump, we can actually flow over 3,000 gallons per minute. Even though it's only rated to 2250, the efficiency is so effective that with 50 PSI residual pressure, you can flow over 3,000 gallons per minute out of the pump itself. And actually, you can do that all out of one of those discharge ports. 
So these That's discharge right. ports have the capacity to flow. Uh, one four inch discharge port has the capacity to flow the entire volume of the pump and then some. Yeah, and for anybody watching that's, I'll say, big into water flow, which is important, um, we talk friction loss all the time. We know, we know, a lot of us know exactly what our friction loss is uh, on our hand lines and our appliances and all, all these things. Friction loss really starts at the pump, and that's something that's commonly overlooked. We don't even think about it because it's out of sight, out of mind. Well, guess what? It still matters. And so what we're talking about today, I think, is is a prime example of of why this pump was designed. And when we say designed, it wasn't a bunch of guys just drawn up. How do we make this water move? Hale actually utilized technology through software to help map the design of this for that reason of efficiency. So I think friction loss, it starts at the pump. It doesn't start at the nozzle or the hose. It starts at the pump. All right, Jeff, I think you're probably ready for us now to uh, to take us back away here. And uh, we're going to focus in on uh, on Jeff again. And hey, really quick, before we go on, Jeff, there was a question that did come in. Jeremy McCourt, you asked, can someone from a fire department come take a class for service maintenance for pumps? Yes, absolutely. Uh, right now, it's it, we're not offering classes on site. Uh, due to COVID restrictions still, but normally we have several classes. There's typically one class a month throughout the year um, around the country, most of them being physically at Hale, uh, and they're actually EVT certified courses. So you can get your EVT certifications uh, on the pump side of things from attending. Um, watch our website for that, and uh, maybe if you want to um, private message John or myself, uh, we'll throw our emails up here later. Shoot us a note, and we'll get you the info on that as well. Jeff, what are we looking at? So generally what we do with the builds is we first pull all the parts. I, I, this isn't a QMAX build because you'll notice that Volute's way too small to be a QMAX. But with it, if it is a QMAX, what you would see is all the parts laid out. There are shadow boards here, and they'll pull all the parts to make sure that we have everything in stock before they start. So if we have delays in the machine shop or we have some, something else go on, we don't put it in the build area until we're ready to go. So from this area, we start to build the gearbox and the impeller at the same time. So you'll notice along here that the, the big green thing over here is that's our oven. So we put our impellers in there. What that does is it expands the impeller. So when we put it on the shaft, it makes it makes a tighter fit. And then at the same time, you can see over here, we're building the gearbox. So we're putting the shifting mechanism in there. He's making sure everything, everything works right, does a pressure test on it, makes sure that it holds pressure and it's not going to have any leaks. Over here, what, you can, what you'll find is this is an area where they've already built out the impeller assembly. So if you have your impeller go bad, it's a good idea to get the entire assembly because as I noted before, we use an oven to heat this impeller up so that it locks onto that shaft. So when you buy an impeller assembly, you're getting this whole block here. So it's, it's merely just unbolt and then rebolt and put everything back into your pump. Hey, Jeff, as you're walking around, Brent Siccarelli said, hey, is there any chance that Bethany's pump is currently on the floor. It should be shipping to Marion soon. So as you're walking through, if you happen to see a Bethany pump, why don't you flag it and let Brent know that's his? Will do. <laughs> so you'll, you'll notice here, this is where all the bodies come from the machine shop after we've machined them. So we put them on our build stands. What do you notice that's different about this pump? It looks like it's upside down. It, it is upside down. Hell yeah. And the reason we do that is it's because it's a lot easier to put the impeller assembly down than lift it up into that assembly. So what yeah. they'll do here is they'll build the impeller assembly up, put on the bottom cap, and then they'll, they'll, they'll flip it over and they'll finish out all the other pieces that they need to install on the pump. And Jeff, for those watching, what, uh, what does that weigh? What does that body of metal weigh right there on a QMAC? You're talking uh, 1,200 pounds. Wow. And that actually, that's one piece. So it acts as a structural cross member, if you will, of that truck. Once it's bolted, it's one piece of metal. Is that, is that right? Yeah. So one of the things you'll notice here is these components down here that we put the mount the pump to that mimics the frame rail. So 
So one of the things we have is it is one solid piece from left to right over the frame rail. So that's, you know, you don't have anything to loosen or weaken or have any leak points. And then after that, we put the entire assembly on a pump card so that it can go through the next round of uh, assembly. So, so luckily they're not doing anything right now, but after the assembly put together, we put it in here and we pressure test. So we, you run it up to 600 PSI. We make sure that it doesn't have any leaks. If it does have leaks, it goes back to the assembly area to fix. So that ensures we have a leak tight assembly. And of course, like I said, this, they're all rolled in and out. That makes it really easy. We don't have to worry about forklifts. Um, they're running tests right now. So I'm just gonna peek the phone in there because uh, I don't have hearing protection on. But what you can see is he's running a test right now. We have another test over on the back. We have a total of three test stations that we can so, run. So Jeff, what goes on in those test stations? I know that that's a big room, uh, but tell us what, what do they actually do in there? So they're, they're basically running an NFPA test. They're making sure it meets all those points. And we're double checking that against the horsepower we know that we use. And so we're ensuring that we don't have problems in bearings. And basically it's gonna ensure that the operation of that pump is gonna be is going to be what the user expects. You can see he's rolling one around right now. And Jeff, do we do that for every pump we make? Every pump we make goes through this test house. And so, so, we, so we have three dynos. Uh, the smallest dyno is 350 horsepower. The largest dyno is 700. So we can pretty much run anything and match any engine performance. Yeah, so whether it be a... a 750 gallon per minute pump or be a Qmax or be an 8FG or even a DFG, we flow at capacity every single pump before it ever rolls out the door. Absolutely. And here this what is, see is he, we hang it up and we paint it. So all our pumps, they first get a primer coat and then they get a finish coat. Every single pump that goes through here. And Jeff, our standard is black. Is that correct? Yeah, and, and you'll notice that uh, every pump we have running through here right now is black. So it's a beautiful thing. Wow. So hey, Jeff, really quick, there was a question that came in from Thomas Stewart. Thomas, thanks for asking. Does Hale do a vacuum test on the pump assembly? We do, we do a test on the, the gearbox, but not the pump assembly. So not the pump assembly, but on the gearbox itself. Most of those final pump assembly vacuum tests are actually done at the OEM once they add all the valving and additional uh, pieces and parts to the system, correct? Correct. And, and you'll notice like on this pump here that's getting ready to go out the door, there is no primer on it. So we need a primer to be able to run that vacuum test. Now, from here, we, we will make it go either out the door, like this one that was on a wooden cart, or we'll build them into something else, into a module here. And each one of these modules will get vacuum tested and pressure tested. Mm -hmm. And I think we do have a, uh, a, a piece on modules. It was uh, one of our earlier episodes where we talked about that. So for anybody wondering what's a module, if you've never heard of it, I would encourage you to check it out. It's uh, basically, it's a integrated piece that uh, is going to tie together more than just a pump, right? It can be part of a pump with plumbing. It can be partially a pump with a pump house on it, ready to mount on a frame. It's all dependent on what the build and the spec has on it. But if you're wondering what a module is, we've got some other content on that from uh, okay. earlier last year. Well, why don't, there's a module right there. That's a beautiful module yeah, as go. a matter of fact. Yeah, if you're wondering what a module is, this is one of our brand new SAM modules. This is gonna go on an F550. It's pretty much plug and play. And then you get the benefits of having a SAM system. So everything is automated. Oh, that's a beautiful site. Beautiful, wow. beautiful site. And what's that, what's our What's our width on that pump house, Jeff? That is 24 inches. Okay, 24 inches. So that's so, allowing that 550 to maximize space due to the smaller frame to begin with. Correct. So Jeff, I mean, I, I got to just say thanks first and foremost for walking us through the QMAX assembly process today there. 
Uh, I know you're working to switch your phone around so we can see you. Um, but, uh, you know, I think it was a great insight into what goes into, you know, the build of a single pump every single time. And so, you know, when you think about the QMAX, what makes it so special? Why is the QMAX the best out there from your perspective, Jeff? The, the biggest reason is the amount of flow you can get out of the pump. So when you look at the majority of the pumps being shipped at 1500, if you order a pump that's capable of 2250, you really have the benefit of that pump lasting for throughout the lifetime of the apparatus without being rebuilt. So if you buy a pump that's only meant to do 1500, you're pretty much guaranteed to have to touch that pump in its lifetime to make sure you, you can still meet that NFPA performance. Yeah, it's a it's a great piece, um, and and you know we touched on it before, but the QMAX is really kind of unique in that, um, literally, you, if you're sitting there on pressurized water sources, you have a pump that has the capabilities to do over three thousand gallons per minute. Uh, so it's really quite impressive when you think about it. If anybody um, doesn't believe us, let us know. We've got a study that breaks this down piece by piece with objective data. You really can't argue the data, so. What's what's said is true. Um, they do overperform for a reason, and that's so that thing will last you today, of course, and way longer than uh, some other pumps might, just because they're built so robust. So um, it's a yeah, good philosophy. Absolutely, and I know I can share personally from my fire department's experience. You know, we've got a, a QMAX, and uh, I got two QMAXs actually uh, in our station. But um, you know, the the more the most recent one, uh, we did a flow test on it and uh, was over 2,400 gallons per minute from draft. Um, and so just goes to show you, just because it's rated, in my case, it's rated at 1750, but we can do well over its rated capacity um, if you have the available water uh, to, to get into the pump. So extremely efficient, extremely effective, one of the best performing pumps, if not the best performing pump period on the market today. Jeff, anything else you want to share with us about uh, hail, about uh, uh, other insightful information today? No, but uh, feel free to reach out to me if you have any questions. Um, we'd rather you come here and see how it's built. It's hard to, you know, really convey the the amount of stuff that everyone here does to make sure that QMAX goes out as a quality product. Yeah, Jeff and. Uh... I want to say thank you again um, to not only yourself, but to the entire team down at Hale for uh, uh, letting us get in and have an inside look today. Um, right. I know uh, it's not always the easiest as we still, as a business, yeah. really are taking COVID very seriously. Uh, and mm -hmm. so it's great to have you ability to be on site, even though you're uh, masked up, we can't see all your pretty face. Uh, and uh, we love that, uh, that made in America, a uh, uh, nice little, uh, uh, face mask you got on there but um, yeah you know my mom made this for me she makes all my masks for me so you know no matter how old you are your mom makes sure you're safe that's there right you and real quick too just uh, for everybody watching and, and listening the how it's made philosophy was something we really wanted to do more of in the last year and, and to me yeah he's got a mask on and we're having to accommodate but you know what this is exciting because this is a big part of why we're doing the jump seat to show some of these things because we know that not everybody's going to have a chance to come on site and do a factory tour next week it's just not reality so things like this are, are what we want to continue in the future and if you have other things you want to see let us know uh we'd like to incorporate other parts of hail other parts of the akron brass line um uh, of course in, in other places as well within the idex family so uh let us know uh, on that jeff uh, Dave said it, but good job. Thank you. And, and, uh, maybe we'll get you a fourth time someday. <laughs> yeah. I, I'm still waiting for my, uh, three times award. So I expect that in the mail. Uh, okay. We'll, we'll work on that for you. <laughs> we'll see we'll you. Jeff. Do, we'll do. Thanks, Jeff. Bye. All right. Thank you. Well, John, uh, another great episode in the books here today, uh, on the jump seat. Um, you know, we got the Easter holiday coming up. Uh, I know uh, I'm getting going to get the chance to have a little time off. I'm taking a little vacation time and going to enjoy the family. Um, how about yourself? You getting a chance to enjoy the family? You bet, absolutely. Family first. So family I think first. I think with that, we want to make sure we let everybody know that and family is important, uh, not yeah. only to myself but to John, to all of us. And um, so we're taking a little hiatus here. And uh, we're going to be coming back to you again uh, with our next episode on April 16th. And as John right. said, 
We've got an awesome lineup of stuff. Watch Facebook. Watch social media. We'll keep posting all the details and keep the reminders That's in right. front of you all. We'll but be we back. Wanna do, we we want to do more of this uh, uh, plant tours around um, the IDEX facilities. I hope to get us into the Akron Brass uh, facility here in the very near future as well. Uh, now that we're allowing us to to have a little bit uh, of uh, more flexibility with the COVID situation currently at hand and vaccinations coming into play. So Jeff, I'll let you, or geez, Jeff, I did it again. <laughs> John, I'm Friday. so sorry, man. It's all good. It is Friday. It's, it's been a long yep. week. Uh, John, why don't you take us home? Yep. We'll see you all on the 16th. Stay well, stay safe, uh, and uh, happy Friday and weekend for those. Take care.